All right, Mary Forrest, welcome to the Balanced Beautiful Abundance Show. Thank you. And what a title and declaration to come into. I love that. I love the boldness of, of what you're here accomplishing. You're all three. You're balanced, beautiful, and abundant. <laughs> so you're my ideal guest. Perfect. Well, I am striving for that uh, every day. I have to say, Rebecca, I was, I was um, watching some different lives and things that you've done in the past. And I have been laughing all day because there is something that you said that I have now shared with everybody in my office. And what you said was, um, and I even wrote it down here, when you say you suck at sales, you don't because you're selling me that you suck at sales <laughs> at that moment. That's the most in your face, but, but obvious, hilarious statement I've ever heard. And I talk about sales and money and things all day long. And I thought that is the, that is the most uh, perfect way to say that I've ever heard. So I just wanted you to know, I've been quoting you all, all day. Whoa, here. Well, I'm so honored <laughs> that you're like a top 1% sales trainer in the history of sales and you're quoting me. So you can, you can keep, you're keep good. that in your repertoire, but yeah, like in that live, I was talking about that every conversation is sales. Every conversation, mm -hmm. someone is convincing someone that their point of view is right. So when someone's telling me I suck at sales, I can't do what you do, Rebecca, they're actually being a better salesperson than me because sometimes I'm like, you're right. And I give up. So they outsold <laughs> me who's a salesperson. So yeah, it's true. There is I everybody like in sales. You're right. And we're not just selling each other all the time. We're selling ourselves on things. You know, they're also selling themselves. I suck at sales. I'm selling myself everything that you said, I'm selling myself that I'm healthy or I'm not healthy. I'm selling yeah. myself that I'm balanced or I'm not balanced. I'm selling myself that I'm kind and good and worthy or that I'm not worthy and I'm not kind. So it's also, you know, we're, we're in that conversation even internally constantly. I love that distinction. How we talk to ourselves is sales all the time. And I know we're going to speak into that because you're a big believer in getting rid of those limiting beliefs that are blocking you. So let me tell, we're just like getting right into it. Oh. I love it. But let me tell my listeners about how awesome you are. So Mary Forrest was named the female executive of the year by the Stevie Awards. All of her sales strategy is driven by science and psychology and experience. I love that. She leads the fastest growing sales training company in the world with her husband, Jason. She is the CEO of a three-time Inc. 5000 fastest growing private company. Her company has won numerous Best Place to Work awards. Mary is a master practitioner in NLP, Neuro Linguist and Linguistic Programming. So these are all such amazing achievements, but I want to know, how did you get into sales? How did you meet your husband? How did this whole journey start for you? Yes, absolutely. Well, I come from a sales family, so I'm very, very blessed that I grew up with a reverence around sales. Um, I remember, you know, being 15, 16 years old, my dad was a sales executive and my mom telling me one day, you know, hey, one of um, dad's sales reps is coming over to the house for dinner. And, um, and I was like, oh, okay, well, like, tell me about him. And she said, well, he's like, you know, a typical sales guy. Well, I'm 15. I have no idea what that means. So I said, okay, well, what's a typical sales guy? And she said, you know, somebody who's really sharp and um, really fun to be around, but is also an expert at what they do and really cares about helping other people and getting, helping other people find solutions for themselves. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's great. So from that, that was my initial programming of what sales is. And so from then I just always thought, well, I want to be fun. <laughs> I want to be an expert. I want to help people. Um, I want to do all of those things. So sales was always, um, where I was drawn and what I wanted to do because the reverence of my family around sales and, and the nobility of sales. So it was always there. And so I, I, I think I was one of the, the few people that was in college and they're like, what are you here to do? And I'm like, become a salesperson. Where's that degree? Turns out there's very few places that have it. So um, I was getting, you know, 
let's go to advertising that's persuasion and public relations and you know all these other things that i was studying um really with the outcome of wanting to be in sales and so i did that i worked um in b2b companies i worked b2c and i came here so i i owned an event company and um was putting on large corporate events um big fun. I was doing a lot of political fundraisers. I was working in, um, I did the, like the 2011 World Series gala party. I was doing these huge, really fun events. And, um, but I started putting out, this is, this is, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get a little woo woo with you, Rebecca. Um, I started putting out, I wanted to put on events that I thought were going to really change the world. So I started looking up like, hey, is Marianne Williamson, need, does she need an event planner? Like wow. does um, uh, Eckhart Tolle, does he need an event planner? Who needs an event planner? Um, and none of them were advertising for it. So I thought uh, Esther Hicks, she's in Texas, I'm in Texas. I thought this will be a perfect fit. I'll put all these events for her. And, um, and none of them were, but I, what I loved, what I realized I also loved most was selling my services, selling my events. I didn't so much love actually putting on events. I just really loved selling it and coming up with the ideas with people. And I, I liked other people to, to handle the rest of it. So um, I found out through a mutual friend that there was a guy named Jason Forrest. He had a new book that was coming out and he had he needed to do this big public event. They were gonna be flying in people from all over the world to do sales training. And I thought, well, I'll go try that. And, uh, and got here and was hooked and thought, oh my gosh, this group of people that are coming together and the message that he's putting out and it was in alignment with sales, but I, I was going straight for um, these spiritual teachers and had missed that, oh my gosh, there's this opportunity of why do we, we don't have to separate things. Right. That business is spiritual and sales is spiritual and how do we bring it all together? And, um, and so that was, eight years ago that I came in and quickly uh, um, came on full time and started doing uh, our events and then moved around, did all the positions in the company, always, always being in sales though. And then Jason and I got married last year. So wow, that is that is... I ended up here today. I love it. So was it like love at first sight when you guys did that first event <laughs> together? Did you start dating right away or did you work together no. for few years or how did that happen? <laughs> No, 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 no. We, uh, we, we worked together for probably five years, um, before he asked me out the first time in which I said, no, only idiots date their boss. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not an idiot, so I'm not doing that. So, um, it's, it's, but we had been great friends, um, the whole time, obviously, and, and worked closely together. We had a very, we have a very tight knit, um, leadership team here. That's always worked really well together. And, um, and so I, I think it took, it took a little bit because I thought, no, I don't, I don't, but turns out I had a leash and, uh, and I'm glad that, um, his sales skills were persistent, um, and he didn't give up. And, and now I am thrilled. I, I have to say, I think it's good to hear people are thrilled. I'm thrilled with the life that I'm living and I, it's wonderful and I'm excited. I do. I feel like that extra balance. I know you're, you're talking about balance in all these different areas. And now to also have balance in a um, relationship is a new thing for me to have that piece into my life. And yes, every piece that adds in that it just seems to, right. We get in flow and the momentum, the different areas all start piecing together. And so um, I'm so, I'm just so grateful for that. That is so beautiful. I love that story. So mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Um, we talked a little bit about the limiting beliefs that people have, and we're going to speak uh, to women specifically in this show, even though there are men and women that listen. What are some common limiting beliefs that women have that hold them back from becoming salespeople, top producers, hitting their goals in sales, even trying to be in sales? You know, it's interesting. I, what I've noticed, I work with a lot of uh, female sales professionals and then also leaders and then work with a lot of women that are moving into leadership positions. So maybe I'll work with them for a couple of years where there's a succession plan happening within a company. And the interesting thing, and I work with a lot of men too. And so 
I didn't notice this until working with both. And then I could even recognize some of the things within myself. And one is that a lot of times as women, and I don't know where we learn this from, but we have a tendency as the most part, this is not everyone, but what I'm noticing is there's a tendency that I want to master something before I stand up and say, I'm going to do it. Mm, um, almost an over prep. Yeah. This over preparation, like I'm not going to, um, and I see it even, I work with a lot of, even the women within my own company of going, Hey, we have a lateral position that could open up or a management position in another, in another department. Well, I don't know that department yet. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of convincing of, but you'll get there. And I promise you're going to learn it because you're going to use, use the same skill sets that you use to learn and to master this. You can learn and master there where what I see a lot from the men that I work with is um, they will jump in and speak to being able to do it before they've mastered it. Mm-hmm. And not, there's not one that's right or wrong. Um, I think it's our own comfort level, but, but well, sometimes when you look at it, it's not, um, we can do it. We can learn it. And just knowing in ourselves, you don't have to be perfect at something before you raise your hand and volunteer to be a part of it. Know and trust that you are going to get there the same way that you've gotten to where you are today. And so that I think is the number one is just knowing like, breathe into it. Don't learn it first. I'll see a lot of women that are going, well, I'd like to get into marketing. So I'm going to take marketing night classes. And once I have this degree and this paper and this, then I'll go out and ask if I can be on a marketing team project. Yes. Oh, just jump in. I think fear it's of all in failure it. is huge. And there's no such thing as failure because if you're in sales or if you're an entrepreneur, you're failing forward. Every time you fail, you're learning something. So I think fear of failure. And then what about fear of rejection? I know that's a big thing that stops women from getting into sales. Can you speak into how women can overcome their fear of objection and maybe not take things so personally in sales? Yes. So I, I, I think, I think it's more of a reframe even before the rejection because understanding that a, an objection that somebody has, um, that's okay. No problem. Oh, give me a little t- chance to get a sip of water. <laughs> okay. This is so live, it's a, it's everyone. <laughs> okay. But people so like yeah, that. This Authentic. This is real. I was actually trying to turn my phone off and I hit Clubhouse by mistake, but I want to, this is really important because so many people, especially women, fear rejection and they take it personally. So yeah, let's talk about this. Looking at when somebody says first, first, before we get to the, the rejection or the no in a sale, uh, people have questions. Um, those questions, a lot of times in sales, we call them objections, mm-hmm. but I think it's reframing that that objection is not to you. The objection they have is between them and them. Mm-hmm. So if I'm coming up and saying, well, you know what? I don't know if I want to, um, buy this shirt and I'm telling somebody, I'm not really sure about the color. It has nothing to do with the salesperson. It has to do, the objection is between me. Does Mary think that I look good in this color? Does Mary like this? It's between me and me, not between me and somebody else. So in that, when we can, when we can now use our feminine power of instead of guarding ourselves from that objection, but instead embracing the person, recognizing that they're in an internal struggle. Yes. And our, our job is to hug them. Our job is to metaphorically hug them. I mean, we're not allowed to hug right now. Is to <laughs> metaphorically hug them, hold them, guide them, give them information on both sides so they can make the, the right decision for themselves. We're now coming out as an outsider, as a guide and as a mentor, instead of as somebody that's head to head with somebody. Yes. And, and so that reframe in itself, and, and that speaks so much to the power of, feminine energy and what we're the way that instead of taking it saying, okay, I want to shut, I want to not be, I want to not be the empath that I am instead go, what a gift. If I can feel the struggle that they're having right now, then I have an immediate, then I can go into that struggle, that feeling and go, what would make that feel better? And now I can speak to them. I can heal that. I can guide it. And that's 
whether or not it's in alignment, whether or not the right decision is to buy what I'm selling or not. But yeah. what a gift um, that, that emotionality that we have is. So what you're saying is instead of thinking of them, if your customer is hesitating, oh my God, they're going to reject me. They don't like me. It's like reaching out to them and like, how can I help you feel better about this decision? I think that is so beautiful. And that's regardless a regardless of what it is. A unique gift that women have in sales. So that absolutely that actually leads into my next question. Do women have an advantage uh, over men as far as being great in sales? Um I'm biased, <laughs> so I will say yes. <laughs> okay. Um you know with all things, there is a, a, um, there's a science and an art to it. Yeah. And so in the training that, that we do with new, with recruits that we hire for people, or if somebody just signs up to be in our training, we teach them first the science, mm -hmm. you know, what do you say first? How do you qualify somebody? What do you, how do you present um, your solution? What are the steps to closing somebody? You know, what do you need to learn? So there's a science to it that we all need to learn. And then it's putting your art on it where people get hung up. And so the, the, right, it's always a double, you know, double-edged sword. So for women, where we get hung up is um, we are so intuitive and we, you know, that is such a gift that women have. We are so, you know, so we are really in touch with our, um, with our empath abilities. And so where that hangs us up is if we don't have a structure and a science mm -hmm. and I'm just feeling into things, I'm like, this is, I feel, and I go, I feel the, the discomfort somebody has in my process, but I don't know how to handle objections. I go, oh, this feels uncomfortable. I guess I should just retreat. Mm -hmm. Let me leave the situation. Whereas if I have a structure, I now can utilize that. Okay. I feel the discomfort here. Okay, let me heal that for this person. Let me use my words. I now know a structure and a science to heal this for them. I can use my intuition um, to help the situation instead of using it as a as a excuse to retreat and leave somebody on their own. Right, right. And so be, because of that gift that we have, I think that we have a capacity to be uh much stronger and faster can have fat, have higher conversion rates and faster conversion rates um, than men because that's easier for us. But again, everybody can have all of these skills, right? Of There's course. so many intuitive men that are out there. Um, but I think it's naturally it's a little bit it's a it's a little bit easier for us. I think it's all about developing both sides, right? We all have a masculine and a feminine side. So men can be awesome and intuitive in sales and women can also learn to be more direct and, and ask for the clothes. And that's why it's so beautiful to, you know, study the, the balance of the masculine and feminine in sales. I, so what are your methods for uh, overcoming objections? Since you just met, uh, I don't want you to give away your training. I know you and your husband have an award-winning training, but if you could maybe, you know, give us just like a couple techniques or pieces of advice, like if you hear an objection, instead of going, oh my God, that's it. So I'm going to maybe role play with you if that's okay. So yes, that's okay. awesome. Um, I would love to buy your product, Mary, but it's too expensive. Yes. So where I want to go from there is I want, uh, there's, there's a, a technique very scientific called stalling. Okay. So if that's where you open up, I can't, I can't even answer. I don't even want to pretend to answer a financial question and a pricing question when I'm not sure Rebecca, what you need and what you want. My price might be too expensive. I don't know that. So I don't want to battle that with you. So instead, the approach I want to have is always to acknowledge what I'm hearing first and say, you know, one is with gratitude. When somebody, when somebody shares an objection, they are trusting us with an insecurity that they have. Mm. So first, I just want to say, hey, you know, Rebecca, thank you for sharing that concern with me. I appreciate that you, you feel comfortable to have this discussion and share it with me. The next step that I'm going to go to is I need to find out what is Re what does Rebecca want? What's her outcome? What does Rebecca um, want to get out of going through training with me? Is it that, you know, Rebecca wants to make 
um, one sale? Is it that she wants to feel more confident in a process? Is it she wants to quadruple her business next year? Because each one of those will help decide if there's enough value that can be given that's, that's, that's equal to that price. So that's where I would go next is I'd really want to understand your outcome frame, your goals, so that together we can decide if it's right. And then I can break down pricing for you. Um, I can help you look at, okay, so in sales, if you, you know, if my 90 day training program is $5,000. So I would say, okay, so let's figure out if that, if it is worth it for you, instead of battling it, because I don't want to presume that I know you or what's best for your life better than you do. Cause I don't, but I do have some knowledge that I can share to help you decide. And so, um, I always, so at that point I would say, you know, how many more sales do you want to get? And what, how much money are each of your sales? So is that, so if you were to get, you know, three more sales, that's worth $50,000 is $5,000 now worth it. If I can guarantee that for you. And now it's, $5,000 is nothing when a second ago, $5,000 was a lot of money. So I want to put it into equal terms with the value to make it make sense. So step one, I just want to thank you for sharing with me and trusting me with your, with what's going on. Step two, I want to understand your outcome frame for what I'm selling. So I happen to be selling sales training or recruiting. So I'm looking there, but if it's a black dress, like, where are you going? Like, is this, is $600 too much? Or are you going to the, the Met Gala? It's going to be worth it, right? So we got to, I got to figure out your outcome frame and where you're going. And, um, and then third, I'm going to put it in an equal playing field for you with the value to determine, is this price something that is in alignment and acceptable with your outcome frame? That's beautiful. I love that. And it is about really creating value in your product, good, or service. Because if somebody says it's too exactly. expensive, then we haven't created enough value. So then you go back, like you said, and go back to your consultation. So I really love that you and your husband, you're more um, consultation style than like pushy. And that's so much warmer and empathetic and it's really caring. It's really being of service. It's, it's beautiful. And I'll tell you, I'll give you a visualization that I go into. I need, um, visualizations really help me. And so um, whenever I'm going into a selling or even a training, anytime where I'm, I go, okay, it's time for me to, um, to, to come bring my best forward. I have this visualization of a pillar here at my spine, a pillar at my back. Pillars I love because they're unwavering. It's unshakable. You can't, you know, I'm, I'm going to hold true to who I am, what I believe to my price, right? I'm not going to waver on that. I'm going to, it's going to be very, very stable. I'm going to be grounded and secure in who I am. And then I picture that the front of me and my heart is completely open. Mm -hmm. So that I can feel, I can hear what somebody's saying. I can be completely present and one with them. But at the same time, I still have that pillar that's supporting me that I know who I am. I know my value because I see a lot of people and a lot of women when, when, um, and this is all salespeople, but I think women, we kind of feel it a little bit more when somebody does give a price objection, especially for selling a service, especially for a coach. Um, that we go, oh, well, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not worth that. Okay. Maybe I'll give a discount. Maybe I'll do this, but we can have that visualization of the pillars. Like I can hear you. I can hear that your price. I can hear that this is going to be a stretch for you. I can feel that I can, I can love you through that, but I also know I'm worth my price. Yes. I also know that my value is there. I also know and stand really strong and that I'm going to give you everything that I have. And that's a value. Yes. And I love it because we get to know our worth. That is, and that is something that I think a lot of women struggle with is, is knowing their worth and self-esteem and just having the courage to ask for the sale, to ask for, you know, the light, even the life they want. If you want to take it to a macro level, like you are living your best life. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this seven figure business, you have a beautiful marriage or you're in your power, but there's a lot of women out there that don't know their worth. So was there ever a time where you were not so in your power that you could really maybe encourage women that it is possible to transform like you have? Yes. Oh, girl, come on. Yes. I mean, I can look at, um, you know, uh, 15 years ago, 
um, <clears throat> my life was, I mean, I would not even recognize myself today. And so there's been a huge, you know, it's it, one step by step, right? We can change, we can manifest whatever you want, step by step, just keep growing and learning and loving yourself. Um, but with that, I would say, you know, go step into the feelings of what you want to accomplish. Step into as much as you can the the way that I played the game is I, I looked at my life and was like somehow I've messed some things up pretty bad and I need to figure this out so I started with writing down what did I want mm. and then I recognized in doing this process this journal of what do I want that <clears throat> none of it was way outside of things that were I could be able to accomplish I mean um, so I put that down and then I stopped thinking about that and all I did was focus on the feelings of it what would it feel like to be in a really beautiful, healthy um, relationship with somebody? What would that feel like? What would it feel like to work for a company of people that are mission-driven and want to work together and are trying to change the world? What would it feel like to go to the mailbox or open up my my bank app and see money there? <laughs> like, What would that feel like? And I just played in the feeling with it. So that's the very pre-version of, of what I did. Now, after that, of course, along the way, I mean, I, I remember the first time, um, there was a lot of times where I would hear somebody read off the bios like you did at the beginning and almost be like, <laughs> is that real? Like, I have tricked all these people into thinking all of that. How did that happen? Right before, before you get there. So here's what I did is I, to me, this is my step. So hopefully this helps somebody. I archetyped the part of me that didn't feel, that felt like an imposter. Mm. I named her. Um, I remember the first, I, I started speaking about 10 years ago at these 20 groups. So 20 groups is a, you know, mastermind groups of, of 20 business owners that are non-compete and they bring in trainers and they meet quarterly or monthly. And so I was going in um, with all these business owners and I remember I was doing one, it was in the construction industry. And I, you know, walk into the room, my very first one, and I look around and realize, okay, first, I'm like 30 years younger than everyone in there. Second of all, I'm the only woman in the room. Uh, third, I've never done anything in construction in my life. And I just go, oh my God, what am I going to do today? Now, instead of saying that's Mary, whenever I had a thought like that, I named her Mimi and I made her have a stupid voice. Uh, so I would mock her in my head. So Mimi would be like, oh, Mary, have you noticed that you're the only woman here? Mary, hey, Mary, have you noticed you're 30 years younger than everyone here? Like, what the hell are you doing here? Like, you don't know anything about this. They're going to find out, like, you're a joke. And so I just, I made her, I made that part of myself, this, this little, and I pictured her, she's like, her shoulders are over, she's nerdy, she just is annoying, nag, telling me, I archetyped her so that it wasn't Mary. Mm. I did that so I could push her aside so I could say, Mimi, shut your mouth. We can talk later. Mary's got a job to do. So I just, through that um, visualization, through that archetyping, that part of me, it separated, my, it, it gave enough distance, just enough that I could muscle through things that I didn't feel 100% worthy for. Um, and then I remember one day, Jason um, asked me, I came back from doing a 20 group and I was going through, here's what happened and telling him about it. And he goes, hey, I'm, I'm curious, were there any, any other women there? And I was like, let me think about it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, there, I think there was one. And he was like, was there anyone like your age there? And I was like, I don't know, let me think about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it didn't stand out to me. I didn't think anything about it. It never even crossed my mind. And that's the cool thing. And that's where I want everybody to also look back because we have these shifts that happen all the time, but when the real shifts happen, we don't notice it anymore. They're so, they're so, so they're, small. Yeah. Yeah. So if he hadn't asked me that, I wouldn't even have realized, oh my gosh, I've grown so much. I felt like I belonged. I felt like, you know, and, and I think the biggest, that feeling of belonging, um, when we can go that we can sit anywhere in any space. And, and sometimes you can tell yourself, I belong here. And, and that happens in both ways. Sometimes when we feel like maybe we, it's a little bit above, above our pay grade, we feel like we don't belong. But sometimes we can get in situations, right? Um, that are, uh, you know, I'll look around and, and go, okay, a group, like if I'm um, 
you know, doing some service work at like a, a homeless facility. Yeah. And I remember the first time going in there and being like, I don't really feel like I'm like, do I stand out? Am I weird? Should I not be here? And going, wait a second, I belong. I belong. All our spirits all belong together wherever we are. And so we just back to the pillar, back to grounding into I belong. We can, we can be there. So it's like kind of a long-winded, weird archetype thing, but those are my own personal, that get this part out of my head. So beautiful. And yeah, we're all children of God, like feeling superior or inferior is actually judgment, right? Of ourselves, of the situation. And it's like, I strive not to judge. And it's something that I struggle with every day, but I'm getting better. It's like, we're all the same. And have you ever heard of Alison Armstrong? She's also a guest this season on the Balanced Beautiful Abundant Show. She actually has a whole part of her training. She doesn't talk about it in the podcast where she says, we all have an ideal woman, like kind of like the good angel and the devil and the ideal woman's like, you're too fat. Those jeans don't make you look good. You know, they're never going to buy from you. What are you doing here? Like you should have worn your heat. Like literally all day long, it's a voice that women have called the ideal woman. And she tells you to do exactly what you did intuitively, Mary. She says to name it and tell her to shut up. So you, you basically <laughs> love it. The ideal woman who is nagging at you all the time. And you named her Mimi. I named mine Mildred. So oh, I love that. That's Mimi great. And Mildred <laughs> can like go like shopping somewhere and leave us alone today. So we can have a great day. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love that. I love that. You did. Okay. Perfect. That is great. Makes me feel good about that process. Then. <laughs> yeah. That was like, you were onto this amazing process. So to go back to sales, I want to talk about the fortune is in the follow-up. So many salespeople, including myself, we do not have the time or patience or organization skills to follow up with people. How can you help people with the method for following up? Well, okay. Because I'll tell you, I'm in that, I'm in that realm too, right? It's hard. Um, so one, I, I love technology. Um, Jason really geeks out over technology and has a million things going all the time to make sure he doesn't miss out. I think first, if we go to the mindset of it, I want to make sure everyone wants to, all people want to feel wanted. Mm -hmm. And I want people to feel wanted with me. And I want them um I think there are so many places in the world that we hear all the time this message, you're not enough, you're not enough. I mean, I even think just going shopping, right? Going shopping, have you ever had the experience where you're clothes shopping and you're, you know, like carrying, like you have like hangers over your arm and you pass a salesperson and they don't say anything to you. Or maybe they say hello and greet somebody else and not you. And, and look, all I do is study the psychology of selling I know that it's not personal on me, but they're still, right? Mimi shows up and she's like, oh, you don't look like you belong here. They think that dress is stupid for you. You know, whatever, whatever Mimi is saying yes. is going. And, and we feel like, again, we don't belong, that we're not there. We're told, we, we, can, we can perceive things as being not enough all the time. When somebody is in a selling process with me, I cannot be another voice that says you are not enough, that mm -hmm. says you don't belong, that says, um, I don't want you. They get that everywhere else in the world. They're not getting it from me. So for me, that's like the number one thing is I'm going to one, ask people to buy and ask for the clothes because it's a gift. If they say no, and it's not for them, I'm a big girl and I can handle that. But what I can't handle is somebody walking away from a conversation with me thinking, oh, did Mary not think that I could do the training? Does she not believe in what I'm selling? Does she not want me? Does she not believe that my team can do it? Does she not believe that I'm a good, I have a good enough company to recruit her people to be in? Does she not, I can't have people thinking that. Yeah. So first for me, I have to ask for the close. And then second, I have to ask for it again and follow up. Mm. And I don't, again, I don't want people walking away. Just, you know, if we look at the numbers, um, the numbers say that somebody has to be asked um, eight times before they say yes and buy. Wow. Eight. That's crazy. That's a lot. Right. And so if I know that, then I know 
oh, of course they weren't ready to buy. I only asked them one time. I got to go back. <laughs> I got to go back. I got to go back and follow up. So one, it just makes the numbers make sense. It understands the way, the process that people buy. Not all people need to hear that many times, but a lot, that's the, the average. And yeah. so now I want to go forward and, um, and continue having people know that they're enough. Now, how we do that, I am super old school on it. And I write it in a planner. I have it right here under my lunchbox that I have it all written down. I like it that way. It is not the most efficient way to work. Right. Um, it is much better using a CRM system and there are free CRM systems. There are, it's putting it and having, you know, automatically it's coming back up and letting you know. It's, um, to me, I like to write it down to me, but everybody, nobody else in the, I mean, Jason, like hates that I do that. So let me be very clear about that. The rest <laughs> of our sales team does not. They have automation. They're using CRMs to make sure that nobody what slips through the cracks. What for? What's CRM mean? Yeah, it's customer relationship manager. Got so it. it's a software. You put the names in and then you like can check a box and say, I emailed them or put the email. So if somebody says they're not ready to buy and they call you a year later and they want your services and you're like, who is this person? It's all in there. You just put their little name in, it pops up. You remember who they are. You've got the emails from your correspondence with them. So you can, you can stay on track of it. And there are free CRMs out there that, that people can use. I think that's the best way. Um, I do put them in there as well, but on my weekly, daily, month, somebody says follow up and, you know, next week or on Tuesday, I write it down because, um, that I, I prefer, I still, I do have a calendar on my phone, but I, I do walk around with a physical planner too, because I just like it. I do too. Here's my, you do? <laughs> going there to, you go. It's like my planner. You know, it's so funny because okay. I love technology, but when I'm like in the flow, I don't feel like stopping, logging in, putting somebody's information in the follow-up. I mean, I guess it's old school. I'm sure if we were like, you know, 12 we wouldn't know any other way but I agree I do like writing things down so um your avatar that you and Jason have for your company is sales warrior training so yeah. the question I want to ask is how is a woman being a sales warrior different than a man sales warrior what does that look like for you how can yeah. you be a well it's funny sales warrior because that's I was telling yeah. you my avatar is called elegant warrior I do elegant warrior training I didn't know that I love that yeah that's perfect I you know for me I, I it's funny I always joke with Jason I'm like um I like being a warrior goddess like that yeah. you know a warrior princess you know I always add a little feminine something on there you can see I got I always have flowers on and dresses and I'm just I like it that makes me feel strong and powerful um so for me, for me, when I think of the word warrior, it's a protector mm -hmm. and there is no better protector than the, the mama bear energy mm -hmm. that we have for, you know, employees, clients, your prospects that you're, you know, the people that you're working with and selling to, do you have that, that mama bear warrior feeling? That's the energy that, that calls me when I hear warrior, um, because warriors are protectors. And so when we're looking at that in sales, I'm going, I'm a protector of one, um, this experience that we're having. I'm, I'm going to make sure that it's most beautiful, uh, most respectful, most direct, but also I believe in being beautiful, direct, respectful. I'm getting you to resolution again, whether that's moving forward with me or not, I need, my role is to have, is for you to have resolution. Um, so I need to protect that space and protect, I want to protect people from, um, the, the not good things that are out there. I want to protect them from ambiguity. Mm. Ambiguity is terrible. We're sitting around all day going, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. And then people just, we sit in that for so long and it just, it doesn't go away. It just Being gets- on the fence is a painful hum. place to sit. That's great. Exactly. And so I need to get people, I'm a protector. I'm a pr protector from the painful fence. And I got to get you off of it as fast as I can. So for me, that's, that's the energy that I pull on. Um, I have these great, oh, I wish I, I had, I just have all this beautiful art coming in and I have one of, um, of, I think it's, uh, who's, I have a, a Shakti and she's got her sword and her, you know, um, and her, uh, what is it? A shield coming up. So we always have these 
these warriors, both the masculine and the feminine being uh, that are all over the office, they'll, they'll be either out there in the office um, that I love. So we have that imagery and those icons and those archetypes of protectors and for um, whether it's a man or a woman. Wow, that is so beautiful. So when you're selling, this is the last question, then we're going to wrap it up. Um, when you sell, do you sell to women differently than you sell to men? Great question. Okay, let me think about that for a second. I will say I follow the same process um, with everyone. So I always start with the same questions. Let me really understand you. And then, so my science, my process is the same with whoever it is. Mm -hmm. There are um, the art and the intuition. I don't know if it's different from the man to woman. It is different based on the person that I'm talking to. Where Where is their energy? What are they looking? You know, um, sometimes I'm speaking to a business owner and he or she is saying, you know, Mary, I, um, I have this product of the service I need to get out into the world. And I want to find a salesperson that loves it the same way that I do. Um, and I want to amplify this and bring it up. And I go, great, let's talk about who that person is so I can find the right person to put in your company to, to get your message out to the world. Um, and so it's about expansion. So then I'm talking about that. Sometimes they're saying, Mary, I need, I need vice presidents of sales because what I want to do is I need, I, I'm ready to leave my legacy. I'm not going to, I only want to work for five more years. I want to retire. I need a succession plan. I need a bench and people to take over. Well, now I'm going to speak in, in, a, in a, talking about legacy and what they want to leave behind and what's important there. So the process is always the same. And then I think the rest of it is, is just around what's important to them. Why are, why are they coming to you? you know, so if you're a, a coach, are they coming to you for balance, you're going to talk to them a little bit different if they're coming kind of going, I want to conquer the world and expand and I want to take over and I want to take market share. All right, well, I'm going to bring that energy and we're going to do that. And so, it, but the, the science of it um, is the same regardless, also regardless of the industry that someone's in. A lot of times people think, well, this is different. You know, if you're selling, you know, big machines, it's different than selling books. It's different than selling, oh, you know what? Because everyone's buying for the same reason. And that's that they believe what they're buying is going to improve their life. Yeah. So are there nuances and subtleties? Yes. But everybody, anything you buy, whether it's a coaching service, whether it's a t-shirt, whether it's new shoes, whether it's water bottles, whatever it is, you believe it's improving your life. And so because of that, that thing that we all have the same, the science and the structure is the same. That's beautiful. Well, I feel this was meant to be because I know that you said in your story that you were wanting to plan events for Abraham Hicks. And in my Instagram feed today, I quoted Abraham Hicks. So I love the synergy awesome. of this. And we're definitely I love that. stay in touch. So how can my listeners stay in touch with you? How can they learn more about your warrior training? What can they do to learn more about your services? Yeah, so the website is FPG for Forest Performance Group, fpg.com. Um, and then I also have a page with my husband that is Mary and Jason um, to see just other things that we're doing. And then I am just Mary Marshall Forrest on LinkedIn, on Facebook um, as well. So if we want to just stay in touch and, and have fun and play there, or if they want services, the website's the best place to see the upcoming events that we have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mary, for being on the Balanced Beautiful Abundance Show. If you're listening on Facebook Live, tag a friend. If you're listening to the podcast, go ahead and give it a five-star review and share it with a friend. We are a grassroots movement. We don't have sponsors. We rely on our valuable listeners to share this great information with people they care about. So thank you again for being on the show, Mary. Now I've met you and your husband. You guys are a beautiful team of yin and yang superstar sales trainers and sales people and it's great that I got to meet you so I'm so glad that he recommended you and thank you again for being on the Balance Beautiful Abundant Show. Yes this has been so much fun and fun is one of my highest values so thank you Rebecca I appreciate it. Mine is too. Thanks guys for listening. <laughs>